What's up? What's up? How are you? Good. You go, Reddy. All right, I guess I'll start. Uh, almost back in the swing of things, so to speak, but uh, what does this tournament mean to sort of get back together as a group and, and have some last before training again? Well, I mean, it's a wonderful event to connect the past to the present. Uh, but more importantly for me, it, it signifies how close we are to getting started and the excitement that goes with that. Coach, over some, do you, I know you want to put the past behind you, move forward, but what did you take? Like, what was the biggest lesson you took from last year? If Is, you can pinpoint yeah, it. Yeah, I would say how much uh, the Bruins fans are passionate and everything because, like, I play golf where outside of Massachusetts, and I'd get friendly bounces. The trees were mad at me. I'd go right <laughs> further into the bush when I hit the trees with my golf shots. Any progress on an assistant coach? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're really close. Uh, I can expect an announcement next week. In terms of the captain, uh, any closer to announcing that? No, no, no not any closer. I think same thing. I think we're trending in the right direction towards having someone be our captain next year. Is that something that you'd like to announce before training camp, during training camp? You know, I, again, it's. I think we've had internal conversations, and I think you know decisions will be made. I don't know if there's a timeline yet decided. How does that so process you, you do go? Expect to have a, a, a captain, somebody with the say, set up a, a committee. Correct. I think yeah. we do. Yes. What makes I think we have enough real good leaders that. We could have a captain that can be this. What makes a good captain in your mind? Um, someone that is confident um, in who they are. Someone that um, isn't afraid to put his arm around a teammate and also hold a teammate accountable and also not afraid to come in my office and hold me accountable to what he believes. I'm doing the right things for the team. I think that's the, he's the go-between between, between the players and, and the coaches. And he's got to be comfortable uh, communicating with everybody. You feel like and you guys. Like, <laughs> being able to you know, be there every day to, uh, for you guys to have a source that has a pulse of the team and who's the leader of our team. you feel like you have a lot of candidates to fill that role? I do. I mean, we lost a lot of leadership people last year. We just didn't lose Bergie. We lost Craig. We lost Felino. You know, so um, players that were very important. But, Everyone's watched those players, especially Bergie for years, and there's a lot of players that have wore a spoke me for a long time to care about the culture, and how we compete, and how we carry ourselves. Going back to what you're saying about being confident in yourself, I mean, obviously, some big shoes to fill. You had Chara, then Bergeron, and this captain, whoever he is, is filling in some big shoes. How do you help them find that balance of, you know, emulating what they learned from that from those guys, but also becoming their own? captain well it's them being themselves um no, their understanding and pride in being a bruin which we have so many we have luch back too that we haven't mm -hmm. even talked about right and um i think lastly is just um you know getting comfortable everyone's going to have an adjustment Mm -hmm. I'm going to have an adjustment with whoever the captain is because I had a relationship with Bergie that's going to be different with them. Um, just, it's, it's no different than when you're working at work. You know, you have colleagues that you communicate with differently and some you have to listen more to and some you have to, maybe you're the talker more, right? Like I mean, with Bergeron, I, it was 50-50. Uh, uh, you know, I may have to talk more with this person because they're looking for a little more guidance than maybe Bergeron was because it's their first time being a captain of the Boston Bruins. I mean, that's, that's just working on your relationship and both of you being open-minded and uh, communicating. It's kind of no shortage of players that you fit in there in the third and fourth line. What kind of identity are you looking for out of that bottom six this year? Uh, players that are going to have an impact on games that are going to make us better and relish their roles. You know, like... You lose guys, I already talked about some of the guys we lost, but you know, we like we lost Nosek. I stuck him out there on defensive zone draws. He got a bad hand dealt by me, but he loved it and relished it, and he moved the pucks from the D zone to the offensive zone. You know, you need players like that that aren't gonna worry about how they're being used, but care about how they're helping the team win. Jim, based on what you saw from league wide last year, and maybe you're talking to other coaches, can you see anything coming down the road for this year in terms of 
league wide trends, offense, defense, anything? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, I have spoken to a lot of coaches, and I think, you know, we all expect the scoring to, to stay where it is. But I think coaches are already try, trying to figure out how to stop the scoring. It's easier to figure out how to stop the scoring than to increase the scoring. But that being said, um, the way the skill level is in the game, the way people can skate, you make a mistake, there's going to be a two-on-one, there's going to be an odd-man rush for either team. So I think the offense is going to keep up. Um, and offense in football, in basketball, doesn't matter what sport, it sells more tickets. So, and I like offense better than I like defensive games anyway, so it's good for me. Coach, you look at the center position uh, in the top six. Uh, it looks like it's, you know, Zaka or Coyle. For each of those, why, why would Zaka be a good number one and why would Coyle be a good number one? Well, because they both uh, can handle a lot of minutes, A. Both of them are coming into believing who they are and how they need to play, regardless of who they're playing with, of how they bring success to the Bruins and how they impact games at both ends of the ice. So, I, like, we're really comfortable especially after seeing them in big games in games three and four play 19 to 20 minutes and play as well as they did. Now I, I'm hoping they don't have to play 20 minutes a night, uh, but we know they can handle that, you know, and that they can handle all three zones of work. Are you expecting a, a different identity for the fourth line this year? Maybe each there and we know what he brings. Um, not really. No. Um, you know, I, I, I think, Pasta won't get hit as much. Archie won't get hit as much because Luch is in the lineup. Um, but I'm still going to want Luch uh, to be a person that um, decides momentum in the games because, you know, um, going out there, his line after goal scored against or for carrying the momentum of the team, um, recognizing, you know, when we're losing momentum, going out there, making a big hit or getting to the net front, crashing the net. Kind of very similar things that Felino did for us, um, but probably because of his history here, carrying more weight than that role. Like as far as how he impacts, especially at home. You had Larko win his job out of camp last year, um, but this year do you sense that there will be more general competition. Like there are more jobs up for. for there's no doubt. There's way more jobs up for uh, uh, that are open, right? And competition is great. And I do think that we are all hoping that there's going to be pleasant surprises, you know, that are going to make the team kind of like Lauco did and AJ Greer did out of camp last year. Speaking of that competition, you've got veterans you brought in and younger guys. How do you like that balance in that competition? Well, I, we like the balance because, you know, and uh, you know, Don Sweeney gives us the opportunity to put the best team on the ice that's going to help us win the most games. And whether it's a 21-year-old, a 19-year-old, or a 29-year-old, um, it could be a 31 year old, you know, I don't know everyone's ages, but if they give us the best opportunity to win, they're the ones that are going to be in the lineup. Did you lobby for Danton Heinen? Obviously got a history with them. No, I, you know, obviously uh, I have a lot of confidence in Dan Heinen because uh, I know the player and the person, uh, but I didn't have to lobby. I mean, he's someone who played third line on team on the Stanley Cup Finals in 2019, so there's a lot of people in the organization that, that you know, are Dan Heinen. Still uh, return a lot of the same defense in the last year, getting this injury back. Do you still find like, the foundation of your team's success is still intact? Like, a lot of the turnover up front. Uh, I think with our who our goalies are and with our decor, um, we're clearly in the top of the league in those departments. And you know, it, it's probably going to rely a lot more on our D men as far as how we play and our team identity of them having more of an impact um, at all 200 feet of the ice, you know, not only scoring, but also uh, we had four centers last year that all knew how we played our D zone, right? So we killed a lot of plays because of them. We might need them to kill a lot more plays uh, in the offensive zone or in the neutral zone with their skating ability and their hockey sense and competitive level so we don't end up in our D zone because we don't have those same layers coming back. You know, those are things that we think that we can ask our D core to do and that they would probably want to do it. Centennial season for the Bruins. How incredible is it from your, you know, professional and personal standpoint to know that you are going to be a part of this season? Well, it's a, you know, it's humbling. It's, uh, it's something that uh, I'm very uh, 
grateful for. Um, at the same time, I noticed that last year, like when I came to this event last year, and I saw how many alums were here mm -hmm. and how many great players there were, and I knew them all. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a hockey historian, so I knew them all. But at the same time, I'd never been part of Original Six, and it started here and it carried throughout the year. Like, didn't matter where we traveled to, we saw black and gold in the stands and what. What'd you think of the 100 years? You know, I haven't looked at it that thoroughly, i got to be honest. I, I know that, uh, yeah, I can't tell you who's in the top ten, I can't tell you who's in the bottom ten, so I can't really make any tell you comment. I could guess that. Yeah. <laughs> top ten, I could guess. <laughs> I got to play with two of them this summer to golf, so that was a thrill in and of, its, of itself. Which two was that? Bork and Orr. Oh, wow. <laughs> they might be, yeah. Um, just kind of piggybacking on Pluto's question about the evolution of the game, and what about you for yourself? How do you feel you're evolving for year two here? Well, you're just a lot more comfortable <laughs> in your surroundings. Like, it doesn't matter if I'm going to Warrior, going to TD Garden, interacting with the players. Um, like, I know three quarters of the players now. You know, like, it's not a get to know process. Like, I spent this week getting to know the guys, like Luch, JVR, um, you know, Shad Kirk. You know, and other players that are already new to the team, or it's Geeky and Brown. And, you know, it's a lot easier to get to know five to eight players than it is, you know, 25, 30. Coach uh, Jake DeBrusque, uh, he's, a lot has happened to him in the past two years. It looked like he might have been out of here in a trade, but he seemed to be able to put all that aside and, and really, I would say, step to another level on the ice. A lot of people are wondering what he'll do without Bergeron. Why do you think he'd be, he can still continue to do what he's doing without Bergeron? Uh, he's going into the prime of his career. I think he's ready to be a go-to player. And not a player, not a complimentary player, but a, a player that drives the line. And, uh, you know, him and I have spoken a lot about that. That, you know, uh, say he was really good for us for 90% of the games. Well, Bergeron, we, I could rely on 100% of the games. There's 10% that needs to be made up, right? And he's got to carry a little bit of that weight now he not only him but a lot of others but i think mentally he wants that and he's ready for it Thanks.